Lord, you're wonderful. Lord, you're gracious. Lord, you're merciful. Lord, you're kind. We thank you for um, friends and family, God. We thank you for just what you're doing here, God. We thank you for everyone that took the time to come out to learn, to receive, to hear. So we give our hearts, we give our time to you, God. Uh, open our hearts to receive. Open our hearts to make that transition, God, to on your word so we can hear clearly from you. Thank you for, God, the people that came out just to enjoy and just have a good time. Uh, this is what it's all about. This is what serving you is all about. We can laugh. We can enjoy music. We can dance. We can have a good time. And we can love you and love each other at the same time. So we give our hearts to you. We bless you. We praise you. And we thank you. In your name we pray and thank you. Amen. Amen. Hey, let me um, on the onset just apologize for the food. I have no idea what went wrong. Um, we're trying to figure that out. Topaz is trying to see what she can do to rectify the issue. So I know she at least went to get some stuff for you. Um, I would say to you up front, we were pretty date clear on our dates. We had stuff signed and everything ready to roll. So something went wrong, but I still enjoyed myself, and I'm hoping you enjoyed yourself. Y'all did all right? Yeah. Amen. Yeah, yeah, good, good. Thank whoever did the popcorn, uh, who did that? Yeah. Vernon, thank you, man. Thank you for the creativity. Thank you for the popcorn. Thank you for just adjusting with us on the fly. Good. Hey, so let me begin. Um, I'm going to shift gears on you a little bit. I just want to open up with a question. I want to dialogue. Uh, as we do, we engage each other by way of dialogue. We spent some time talking about the issue of identity, um, knowing who we are. So I want to open up with a question for conversation, and then I want to take you along a path where we're going to be going next. So if I were to ask, now that um, we know our identity, assuming that we do, right, assuming that we know who we are, and I'll ask maybe what that is, what does all that mean as it relates to how now we live this out in the world, okay? Now that I know my identity, what does all this mean as it relates to how I live it out? How do I walk this out? How do I go about being who God would have me to be? What does that mean? What does that look like? Uh, let's just talk about that a little bit. First of all, um, if somebody want to tell us what, what does it mean to say I know my identity, and then we'll just segue and just keep moving. So let's talk. Let's dialogue. Let's talk. Yeah. Anybody? Thomas, since we're taking too long to talk. Yeah. Go for, go for it, brother. Yeah. Amen. God is my father. I like very own. He's my very own father. And I am his child. So I'm a child of the king. My identity is in Christ. There's some tables up here, young lady. Come on, we have plenty of seat. Yeah. My identity is in Christ. Now, the follow-up question that I want us to talk about for all of us, what does that mean and what does that look like and how are we supposed to live that out in the world? Okay? Let me have a couple of you. Go for it, sis. Yeah. Who is our fellow man? Okay. In this room only or everywhere? Okay, in the community. Good. Okay. Good. What does, I'm, I'm pressing for a reason. What, is that a hand? What, go for it. Go for it, Trey. Okay, okay. being intentional in my actions and in my walk with God. Okay, being more conscious of who I present myself to be. Good, 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 good. Somebody else, let's talk. Go for it. I like that. What does ambassadorship mean? Nice. Nice. So we're part of his kingdom, and that's where I want to land. We're going to kind of talk through this a little bit, and we should reflect who Jesus Christ is, is what I heard you say, Mr. Robbins. Okay, good. Anybody else? What does that mean, and how do I walk this out? Now that I know who my identity is and who I am in Christ, what does that mean, and how do I walk it out? Go for it. Yeah, let's just talk. Let's talk. Let's talk. We are to be life givers. What does that mean? You got to talk loud so people can hear you. Okay, that means that we are, should be obedient to God and give life to others. Okay, anybody else? One more. Let's go for it. John? Wow, we got to love like nobody else loves. Okay, good. I want to hear some of the bad stuff. We're saying all this good Christianese stuff. Come on, yeah. Yeah, let's talk work. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, I mean, when I say bad, not so much negative, but the stuff we don't like to do. Yeah. 
There you go. Stuff like that. Yeah. And I've had to do that. Yeah. That kind of stuff I want to talk about. You cuss somebody out? Yeah, yeah. 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 Right. I'm a representative. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Be an example. Yes. Yes. <laughs> nice. Nice. Go for it. Yeah. Denying ourselves. Good. Not doing what we long to do, but what as Christ said we should do. Good. We're landing. Good. Go for it. Stress. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Okay. Let me get sister and then brother. Then, then I want to share a couple things. Okay, we can go way back there. Go for it. Not to judge. I like that. That's difficult to do, isn't it? I. That is. Come on, y'all. Isn't that difficult to do? Because we have an opinion. Yeah, go for it. Putting others above ourselves. Is that a struggle with you and Judy? Or I'm just joking. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just <laughs> in general, yeah. Okay. Siobhan, let's talk and then we can talk. Belt it out, Siobhan. We have dominion. That's nice, though. I want the bad stuff. That's very nice, but it's good. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit that we have. Talk about what that means so we can hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yes. So we have dominion. Now, let me ask another question as we kind of keep walking. If I use the term resident aliens, think about what I'm saying. My identity is in Christ, which makes me now a resident alien. Think about that term. What does that term say to you? Let's talk about it. We're passing through. Okay, this is not our home, so we're passing through. I'm going to hang out with that phrase for a little while um, because my concern for Christianity is we believe that, which is true, but we spend the entirety of our Christian journey on that statement. I'm passing through. I'm passing through. So I want to make a statement following in a little while to kind of land us a little bit. Were you going to say, who else going to say something? Okay, go for it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Why do they got to have a card? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, <laughs> Yeah, that's kind of cold. They got a card. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Well, it's, it's good. Go for it, Tom. We can say something. Yeah, 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 yeah. You talking about what John said? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Are you saying we should live like it is, or or we live like it is, or you say we should not? What are you saying? I'm, well, it's, it's a two-edged sword. Yeah. Because we have the liberty and, and, and the grace and, 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 and the blessing yeah. to, to, to live in abundance here on earth. Yeah. But we, we, when we do, as, we're do, lot, as some of us are doing it, yeah. we're, we're considering this our home. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
Good, good. So I'm going to um, uh, go for it. Um, um, what's your name again? Sel- Selva, yeah. Okay, go for it, yeah. I went black. Yeah. Uh, so I thought about the storm that came through. Yeah. 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 Okay. 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 I want to talk about that because that's the subject matter I want to discuss. Were you going to say something? Well, last. Right, right. Steve, and then I'll, I'll talk. Go for it. Does that mean we have diplomatic immunity? Y'all still saying the nice stuff, though. That's, that's, the, nice, that's the nice Christian stuff, right? The, the nice stuff is this. The nice, the nice stuff, were you going to say something? And then I'll talk for a while. Go for it. Yeah. And the problem with church is the nice stuff. I want to talk about that. We're not of the world, so we live in the world, but we're not of the world. Right. We should live by kingdom principles, which are higher principles. And that's always hard to do because yeah. we, we act like we know it, but yeah. we, when the situation comes forth to challenge us, yeah. Yeah. We act like the world. Yeah. So let me go here. So John made the statement, and, and I know who I am. We know who we are, assuming you know Christ as your Lord and Savior. Your identity is in Christ. And the thing that I want us to lock into and understand about that statement with our identity being in Christ is that we have transferred kingdom. Does that statement make sense? Okay. Um, I have made the shift, and I have made the transition now from an earthly kingdom to an heavenly kingdom right? So what that means is just like you said, I become a resident alien. The world is not my home. I'm passing through, but in the passing through, don't miss the point that I'm not home yet, right? So here's what this looks like. For the entirety of your Christian life, as long as you're living and breathing earth, you're not passing through your living, The only time you're passing through is when you die and you're on your way to heaven, right? Right now, hear me say this, you're not on your way to heaven yet, you're living here on earth, right? And so we're going to talk this out, we're going to talk this out. And I'm saying that intentionally because I want us to understand that with our identity in Christ, as kingdom subject, as resident aliens, our kingdom is not of this world. And here's, you got to lock into this. God leaves us behind so we can take as many people as we can on the journey with us. And we forget that truth, and we think it's all about us. We think it's about, I'm just passing through. Lord, help me. We think about all that stuff, and we forget why we're left behind. We are left behind. Okay? Jesus came And for three years, he was a resident alien in the earth realm, right? And while on earth, he took 12 guys, and he messed up the entire world with those 12 guys. He he had such an impact that when he left, I'm going to show you this in Scripture in a little while, he told them, now mess up the rest of the world like I just did. The goal is, when I come back, I'm coming back with a big enough aircraft carrier to fit everybody. So no one's left behind, and we forget that message. We forget that message. We know who we are, and we live life not caring who anybody else is. Process with me for a little while. So let me paint a picture for you, and we're going to pick this up in the upcoming weeks on Sunday. We're going to spend a long time talking through this to really get a picture of this. 
In the Old Testament, well, let me go to Eden, right? In Eden, here's a picture of what Eden looked like. I think Eden could be a metaphor or a symbol of what heaven was like. God had this perfect sinless garden where he was God, and he had these two individuals that lived in this garden with him, right? And the relationship was such that God would come down in the cool of the day, and he would hang out with them, and they would fellowship together in this perfect, listen to a term I'm going to use, kingdom, right? So the man and the woman, they messed that up. And they ended up being cast out of the garden, and God set on this path now to redeem them or bring them back into relationship with him. But lock into this. Even in him putting them out, he still covenanted to be their God because he had a relationship with them. Is this making sense? You guys are tracking with me. So look at the whole of the, New T the Old Testament. The entirety of the Old Testament now is this picture. God goes about... And he says, I'm going to send my son into the world to redeem the world, to bring them back into relationship with me. And he chooses a specific people group as the vehicle through which he was going to send his son into the earth realm. Now, in him cho choosing these people in the Old Testament, here's what he said to them. You are now members of my kingdom, and I am your king. So let me use Siobhan's word, domain. Right? So here's you got to see this weird picture happening in the Old Testament. These people called the children of Israel or Abraham's descendants, right? Um, they have this guy who says, I'm their God. They're in my kingdom. And the rest of the world that exists, they have a God and they have a kingdom themselves. But their kingdom looks completely different than the Israelites' kingdom. Because they have a literal person sitting on a throne. They have a literal monarch or a ruler that's over them. But the Israelites, they have a God that they can't see. They have a God that loves them, a God that cares about them, right? And God is saying, I want to have this relationship with you such that when the people see this kingdom, they would be jealous of my love towards you and they want to be a part of it. Lock into what happens in the Old Testament. The Israelites says now, they couldn't handle the fact that they can't shake God's hand and they can't knock on his door and they can't go into his office even though they could. You kind of get what I'm saying, but they missed that. Here's what they said to God. We want to look like the other nations. We want to vote. We want to have a king that sits on the throne of our kingdom. And God said this to them. If you get a king, he's going to take your money, he's going to take your house, and he's going to take your woman. It's in scripture. Check it out, right? Make a long story short, they end up getting this earthly king and lock into what happened when they got this earthly king. They start to forget who God was. And they forgot the truth that they're part of the kingdom of God. So God sets out on this, my words, rampage to reclaim them back into a relationship with him where because their identity is in him, he ends up being their God. That's the whole of the Old Testament, right? A king is in charge and he's trying to maintain posture where he is God and they are residents of his kingdom. That's the Old Testament. To be a part of that kingdom, you had to be an Israelite descendant. You had to keep the law. You had to do all this kind of stuff. And in the Old Testament, loosely, it was only a select group of people that can be a part of that kingdom. Okay? New Testament comes on the scene. This guy named Jesus shows up. Now, somebody tell me why Jesus showed up. Come on, y'all talk. Why did he show up? To do what? Talk, talk. Do, what does fulfill the law mean? Okay. To, or to pave the way so that all the Old Testament rituals that may gave you access to the Old Testament kingdom of God, killing the cow and killing the lambs, and thou shalt not, and thou shalt this, all that stuff. Jesus shows up, listen to what I'm going to say, to create a broader kingdom and then to make it real easy to have access to that kingdom. So where in the Old Testament it was the Israelites, in the New Testament when Jesus comes on the scene, he says not by the blood of bulls and rams and all this stuff, now he says this, whosoever will, let him come. I'm going somewhere with this because this is very beautiful. So Jesus comes on the scene, and here's what he essentially does. Everybody whose identity 
ends up in Christ, they now have access to the kingdom of God, and there's a process by which that comes, okay? So listen to me. Jesus sets out now for the entirety of his earthly ministry, here's my words, as a resident alien building daddy's kingdom. That's where we come in. That's where you come in. Does that make sense at all? Okay? So now, here's what that means. When I give my life to Christ, I have an assignment because now in the New Testament, I'm a part of God's kingdom, and my challenge is not to live life like me. Here's how I'm going to say it. My challenge while I am here on earth is to help God manifest his kingdom on earth. Just like it was in Eden, just like it existed in the Old Testament, now in the New Testament, my new assignment is to bring heaven to earth. You guys looking at me like, what in the world? You guys all right with that? Look, go to Matthew 6 and 10. I'm getting ahead of myself, but let me just show you that one. Then we're going to walk through a couple of, couple of scriptures. Matthew chapter 6, verse 10. And yes, they're welcome to eat. Yeah, we're, we're in a flow right now. Give us two minutes and we'll eat, okay? Yeah, we'll be all right. Just, just don't let the food get cold, okay? <laughs> I'm going to move you quick because I do want y'all to fellowship and eat. And we did this. Okay. Matthew 6 and 10. Somebody read that real quick. Yeah. So listen to this. Listen to the statement through this vein. There's a present aspect, and I say this a lot, and I'm hoping you guys don't miss it. So I'll say it again to sound like a broken record. There's a present aspect, and there's a future aspect of the kingdom, right? There's a kingdom in heaven, wherever heaven is, and I'll use that term loosely, and there's also should be a kingdom on earth, okay? And here's what that means. While I am resident on earth, I am a member of God's kingdom. While I'm a resident in heaven, I also become a member of God's kingdom. Now, here's the depth of what I'm really saying to you. A lot of us have a good picture of what kingdom in heaven looks like. And we fool ourselves into thinking that kingdom in heaven cannot be replicated on earth. And I want to challenge that thought process tonight for a moment, only because we know who we are. And I want us to flesh that out a little bit as we move forward because we're now challenged to live this life out the way God would have us to live it, right? So let's look at Christ. Let's look at how he um, modeled this when he came to the earth, right? So go to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. Let me get my Bible. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. I want to show you something as it relates to your identity. I, lose, I lost my Bible. Oh, here it is, yeah. Yeah. 1 Peter 2, 9. And let's read, and let's talk, and let's walk, walk this out. Okay? You guys are there? Okay. So somebody read. Let me get a good Pentecostal person. Annette, go for it. You're a good Pentecostal. You'll be fine. Just belt it out, girl. Read. You got it. Um, two and nine. Yeah. I think I want two, nine through ten. Yeah. Okay, good. Let me read it again. Listen to this carefully, and I want to talk about this just for a couple of minutes as you walk through this. Listen to what it says. You, meaning you and I, are a chosen race, a royal, what's the word? Priesthood. Priesthood. A what kind of nation? You kind of see the kingdom concept, right? A people for whose possession? God's possession. Now, notice the why. Why is that? That we may do what? Proclaim the what? Excellency of what? Him who did what? Called us where? Into what? Now look at verse 10. Verse 10 says, there used to be a time when we were what? Not a people, right? But now you are God's people. Um, once you had received mercy, but now you have not what? Receive what? 
So here's what this text says. Let me go back to John's statement. Hey, we're just passing through, okay? And, and a lot of us live our Christian journey like that. And here's one of the dominant reasons we're left behind is to tell people who brought you out, right? I'm a king. Hey, you too can be a king. I'm a priest. Hey, you too can be a priest. I'm a child of the king. Hey, you too can be a child of the king. Okay? Now, if our concept is passing through, all I'm concerned about is me, myself, and I, and forget you, I'm in a hurry because I don't want to get caught in a traffic jam because I'm trying to go somewhere. No, 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 no. The resident part of our alien title is that we live here until the green card is reclaimed. So listen to how I'm saying it. You're authorized to live here until God says it's time to come home. And while we're here, it's not for us to only have good church and shout and sing good songs and to shout all that good stuff. No, 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 no. We have work to do, so we've been left behind for a reason. We miss that. We miss that. So I'm here to build God's kingdom. So listen to the metaphor. I'm a salesman for Christ. Somebody used the word ambassador tonight, right? I've become an ambassador for Christ, even though my residency is in heaven. While I am living on earth, I represent Christ. You guys okay with that? Okay, so let's walk this out to see how Jesus did this and what this kingdom living look like. So go to Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. And I'm almost there. I want to walk you this real quick. Luke chapter 4. Um, let's get there, let's get there, let's get there. And then let's read. And then jump down to verse 16, I believe it is. You guys there? Okay, listen to what Luke 4 and 16 says. Now, this is when Jesus um, left the wilderness after fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. He begins now his earthly ministry. So notice this. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, as was his custom, he went to synagogue on the Sabbath day, and he stood up and read. The scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll, and he found the place where it was written. And listen to what it says. The Spirit of the Lord is what? Upon me. Why? Because he has anointed to do what? Proclaim the good news to who? The poor. He has sent me to do what? Proclaim liberty to the captives, and the what? Recovering of sight to the what? Blind. And to set at liberty those who what? And to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And then look at the next verse. And he did what? He rolled up the scroll, and he gave it back to the attendant. And, and then he says, he sat down, and the eyes of all the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Okay, now process what we just read for a little while. The text opens up like this. For years, from Genesis to Malachi, 400 years pause, Matthew shows up on the scene. From the creation of time up until then, they were having good church. Every Sunday, right? And then Jesus comes now. He, he gets called by the Spirit. He shows up, and he messes up their church service. Because the text says he shows up one Sunday, as was his custom, and apparently he was a rabbi because he was on the rotation to give him a chance to speak. And when it was his turn to preach, here's the message he preached. He opened up in Isaiah, and he says, God did say the kingdom of God was going to come. God did say you've been kingdom subject, so I just showed up to let you know that it is here, okay? And here's what it looks like, okay? I am here to set the captives free. I am here to give recovering of sight to the blind. I am here to mend the brokenhearted. I am here to bring relief to the poor. And he says, and it starts now. And listen to me. From then on out in Jesus' earthly ministry, the reason the scribes and the, the Pharisees didn't like him is because he went to work because he realized he was not just passing through. He was there to build God's kingdom and that's where the church had a problem with him. He's hanging out with sinners and publicans. And he's like, I'm trying to get them in the kingdom. But he's not hanging out with us. You're already in the kingdom. <laughs> yeah, why would I need to hang out with you? 
So I got you on Sunday, as is my custom. So we'll worship together, but come Monday, let's get at it. Right? You guys see what's going on here. Okay? I'm going to flip the script a little bit. I'm going to keep walking. So what does he do? I've got to go do what Luke says, right? Uh, come on, say he has to do something. Say it again. Say he has to do something. So here's what he has to do. He has to um, proclaim the good news to the poor. He has to um, proclaim liberty to the captives, the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. He has work to do. So go with me to Matthew chapter 5 real quick. Matthew 5. Matthew 5. Watch this real quick. Matthew 5, um, verse 5, I think it is. Give me five more minutes. I'm almost there. Matthew 5 and 5. You guys are there. Let me see here. No, I don't want um, Matthew 10. I'm sorry. Matthew 10. Wrong place. Yeah. 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 Five. Start at verse five. Okay, I want to make sure I want to do that text. Okay. Let me read. These 12, well, back up to verse one. Verse 1 of 10. You guys see that? So remember with me, he said, I got to go change the world, right? So notice what he did. He called to him his 12 disciples, and he gave them authority over unclean spirit to cast them out, to heal every disease, every affliction, and then it tells you who the names of the 12 are, okay? Simon, Peter, Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, John, and the brother Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. Come on, say 12. 12. So lock into this. I've got to open blinded eyes. I've got to heal the sick. I've got to raise the dead. I've got to do all these kinds of things. Notice the first thing he did. He goes and he builds a group of people. And then he empowers them to replicate themselves. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? He empowers them and lock into what he empowers them to do, not to have good church, but to do what he himself is doing, inclusive of having good church. So my ministry is to open blinded eyes, heal the sick. So he calls 12 and he empowers them to do the same thing. Isn't that amazing? You guys get this, right? You see how this is going? And then, so now go to John 14. Let's just walk by John 14 really quick. Let's just walk by John 14 really, really quick. Uh, I'm just going to skim you through this because I want to land uh, something someplace after this. So the 12 is going out, and they're doing everything that God says, right? And then John 14 talks about now that he's at the end of his earthly journey, he has to go away, and when he goes away, um, the Father is going to send the Comforter who is going to be with us and who's going to be in us, right? So here's what he's saying to the disciples as he's about to leave. Hey, I know I'm used to being around you guys, and I'm going away, and you think when I go back home because I was passing through but I hang here for a little while, the work will stop. But he says, no, the work does not stop because when I go, the third person of the Trinity is going to come and God's going to release the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will enter you and you will keep the work going of building my kingdom. Everybody okay with that? Right? Building my kingdom. And then here's what he says. Here's what he says. Lock into this statement real quick. Look at verse 12. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do. And I love this phrase. And greater than these shall you do, because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. So here's what Jesus said. You guys think I did something miraculous? Come on, I raised Lazarus, and I raised, you know, healed the woman of Nain's son, and I fed 5,000. You thought I did, and that was so cool. He says, listen, when I go away and you guys get released in the spirit and everybody go get 12, you'd be amazed of what you're going to do. I can't even touch what you're going to do. This is what Jesus is saying. I'm going to re release the spirit and the spirit's going to empower you and watch the impact you're going to have. Right? He goes to Calvary. He dies. Um, I'm, I'm landing real quick. He resurrects from the dead, raises from the dead. He calls his disciples together. And then notice what he says to them in Matthew chapter 28. Go to Matthew chapter 28. Yeah. 
and then we'll stop here. Matthew 28, and jump down to verse 16. Start at, yeah, 18, thank you. 18 is cool. Matthew 28 and 18. We're there, Topaz. We're coming right now. Yeah, Matthew 28 and 18. You guys are there? And I'll quote the rest of the scriptures for you. So here's what he says now. All, what's the word? Where? And where? Okay, pause. I have authority where you're hoping to go, and I have authority where you live right now. <laughs> right? So you don't have to wait till you get there to do what I need you to do. The same power you're going to get there, I'm giving it to you now. Now. I'm giving it to you now. Here's what I want you to do with it. Okay? Watch this. He says here, where did I stop off? Keep reading. Then he says what? Go, therefore, and do what? Doing what to them? In the name of the Father. Keep going. Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And then look at verse 20. Do what? To do what? And behold what? I find that amazing. I find that amazing. So I'm, I'm wrapping this up. He comes, he opens up in Luke, and he says, this is what the Old Testament said I'll be doing when I get here. He go gets 12, and he teaches them to do what he did, right? And very, very important for you not to miss what they were doing. They were going around saying, uh, in the name of Jesus, demon come out, right? They were saying to the blind, eyes be opened up. They were saying to the captive, be released, okay? They were saying to all, I want you all to get this. They were pouring word into them, and they were being set free because they had the power of the Holy Spirit in them. Then he's getting ready to go to heaven, and he says now to them, everybody go get 12 and make disciples, okay? And then notice what you do with them. Okay, you teach them to observe everything that I have commanded you. What did he command them to do? Open blinded eyes. He, oh, y'all not getting this. Come on, you see what I'm saying? He said all that stuff. So here's the thing. If the church is released in our city and we're released to do what God would call us to do, there ought not be very many sick people on the street. There ought not be very many drug addicts. There ought not be very many alcoholics. Y'all not hear me. There ought not be very many single mom raising kids by themselves. There ought not be very many people. People going to jail because we have been empowered by the Holy Spirit to impact our community and change this place where God has us. But if we don't know our assignment because we refuse to identify who we are and recognize that we live in a different kingdom, not the kingdom of this world, we will miss what God is calling us to do. And we get caught up in the political debates and all the crazy stuff. I'm not worried about that. I don't live in that kingdom. I live in this one, and my assignment is to build God's kingdom. And I am empowered that whatever your problem is, the God that I serve has given me the ability to get you out of your mess so you can be a part of his kingdom. And we miss that. I didn't mean to get excited, y'all, but this is just, this is good stuff. We got to get this. You kind of get, we got to get this. We've got to get this. We've got to get this. We've got to get this. I've got my little nephew struggling with sexual pornography. I'm empowered to go to him and deliver him. But if I don't realize whose kingdom I am, I'm in and where he belongs, I'll miss it. And we miss it. Because we think the Holy Spirit is. Didn't God show up? And we don't know how to release the spirit for kingdom purposes. And we think it's all about church. And here's what happens. We become Sadduceic and Pharisaic. We think it's all about Sunday morning in the temple. And we protect the temple. And we lose the community while we protect the temple. And God is saying, I left you behind to build my kingdom. What are you guys doing? So here's an example, and I'm done. In Acts 2, the disciples were in the upper room, and the Spirit came, and the very first outreach that they conduct conducted, 3,000 people plus gave their heart to God because of the release of the Spirit. 
Growth is not a problem if kingdom subjects do what kingdom subject is supposed to do, right? Remember we said all the nice stuff. We're empowered for boldness. We're empowered for all that kind of stuff. But yet and still we go to work every day, work right next to that sinner and never set them free. Never. Why? Because we go to work and we act as if we have left the kingdom and entered the worldly kingdom. So I guess I'm in Rome, so I better do like the Roman. No, 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 baby. You didn't leave the earthly kingdom. You took the heavenly kingdom into Rome. You better know how to function like a kingdom subject while in Rome. Big difference. Y'all getting this? Y'all getting this, right? So, so this, this, I mean, we have to understand whose we are. This is why I love it. Jesus can go to weddings, and he can go to funerals, and he can go to all that stuff. And people come to a relationship with him because he know who he is, whose he was, and where he lived, and what kingdom he belonged to, and he knew his assignment. My hope is that we start to learn our assignment and go to work for the kingdom. Yeah. Bow your heads. Amen. Bow your heads. Don, play something, man. Let's um, just take a moment to reflect. And since Topaz is in a hurry for us to eat, um, we'll have her pray a little bit, yeah. Um, but I want to share some things, and then we're going to pray, yeah. Take a moment, you reflect. Say, Lord, what are you saying? Lord, what are you doing? We're kingdom subjects. I'm, my identity is in Christ. I'm a child of the king. I live in the kingdom. What does that look like? What does that feel like? What does that mean? And how do we do that today? Yeah. Lord, you're wonderful. Lord, you're gracious. Lord, you're kind. We love you today, God. We bless your heart today. We give this to you. We thank you for a great start of jazz and Bible study, God. We love the energy in the room. And we're going to use that as a vehicle to draw people into your kingdom, God. That's what we're going to do. You've gifted musicians. You've gifted singers. You've gifted artists, God. And we're going to use it, take back from the enemy to bring glory to you. But remind us of our assignment. We can form communities, God, that will impact wherever we are. So I thank you for your word. I thank you for what you're doing. I thank you for this body of believers that saw fit to come out to receive from you. We love you. We give you praise. We give you honor. And we give you glory for who you are. We bless your name. Be God in our midst, Lord. As we contemplate and process throughout the remainder of the week in preparation for Sunday, Holy Spirit, do your work. And we give our hearts and time to you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God a hand praise. Amen. Bless the Lord. Yeah. Yeah.